and welcome to The Source. I'm Nat. And I'm Jack. It's Tuesday. We're here at Bristol Zoo Gardens this week. So forgive us if we start monkeying around. I like that one. Or just behaving like animals. <laughs> Here's what's up next. He's weird. He's wonderful. He knows a thing or two about Bristol and he wears a very special jacket. It's Colin with his Unnatural History Unit. Also, I went down to Brassworks Theatre to hear about their play, Deep Pit, a tragic story about a husband and wife suffering the hardships of life in the Kingswood coalfields. I report back on how we got on at our beach clean at Portishead last Saturday. And as part of Black History Month, I caught up with the local music legend, Kingsman, also known as Chrissy Chris, about his influences and the new EP. It's Tuesday and there's a tweedy kind of smell in the air. It's not the gorillas. It can only mean one thing. It's time for Colin's Unnatural History Unit. Oh, the SS Great Britain, I'm going to go to America. I'm not, I'm not sure where that accent's coming from. I'm going to make my name, make my fortune. To get there, I've got to arrive in style. So I'll be going first class on Brunel's SS Great Britain. That, actually, no, it's me, Colin, from the Unnatural History Unit. And we're here at the SS Great Britain because it may sound like history, talking like we did then, but it actually is real, it's here, you can touch it, you can feel it. It's a living story that is continuing and it is right here at the heart of Bristol, which many people say is the harbour. Uh, let's go and find out more from the experts on board. Why, it's Jess Helens. Yes, Thank hi. you. Come on board my little tiny hi. little boat. Perfect day for it, I Jess. Know, it's beautiful, isn't it? She Your looks boat. gorgeous. She does look beautiful. And why are boats always she, by the way? I've always wondered that. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know that, quite, that yeah. answer, so... You can phone <laughs> in. Talk to us. Tell us. <laughs> Let us know. That Maybe was putting you on the spot. Next time. That was putting you on the spot. Uh, the History Jacket has another question, though, which is... Yes. This is iron. Yes. Now, iron, I, I'm, I mean, I've seen the swans swimming around. Yeah. They float. Because yeah. they've got special light bones and feathers with oil in them or something. That's, that's a natural thing. We're unnatural history unit. But Great. your boat is iron. Now that wood, wood floats. Yes. Wood is good. Yes. Varnish it, stick it on the water, yes. off it goes. Yeah. But what about iron? That sinks. It does, but uh, not on the ship. And everyone did believe that she was going to sink, which is why you'll see um, photo, uh, not photos, <laughs> illustrations of the launch from her dry dock here in Bristol. And you'll see thousands of people she would float but Brunel had designed her in a certain way that she, she does and uh, well not anymore but she did and um, yes so she was a marvel they didn't believe it but it happened she, she still is a marvel yeah she is the fact the fact that she was beached on the Falkland Islands and someone punt they punched holes in the yes, side scuttled her scuttled yeah. scuttled <laughs> another technical word we've learned today keep adding these words up yeah. They're all going in uh, the most important thing is once you're scuttled that's it that's the end of your life I, yeah, I assume to be. in Australia they, they deliberately sink ships to create new reefs. Yes. But your, your ship's here. Yes. But it was on the Falkland Islands with the holes in the side. Yeah. How is that possible? Uh, well, um, yes, they did scuttle her and she became an attraction for the people of the Falkland Islands. They used to boat out to her and picnic on her. Um, but um, in 1969, the kind of rescue mission was started. Um, and they brought her back on a barge, so she didn't float the whole way. There are photos of divers stuffing mattresses into her hull to try and make her as watertight as possible. There's always plenty of mattresses hanging around. <laughs> loads, loads We've seen them, there's one over there. So yeah, if you've got a scuttle ship, start collecting mattresses. Just then that, that's all you need. Yeah. Um, and then she piggybacks a barge back to Bristol and, and, and a lot of people will remember seeing her come under the bridge, which was a wonderful serendipity of the two masterpieces of Brunel coming together. Um, Had they met before? Oh, they met before? Because the ship was built, uh, opened afterwards, 
um, after the ship had left Bristol. So that had never happened until 1970. We really didn't think that that would ever happen. So it was beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. She's and she is beautiful. She is a beautiful, beautiful design. But yeah. I heard that there were changes and there were revolutionary things about this ship that gave her that edge. Yes. So what changes? I mean, there was paddle steamers at that time. So why isn't this yeah. a paddle steam? Well, um, there's a story that Brunel saw a little wooden boat. Um, was it this one? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> going through the water really quickly but um, he thought well a screw propeller works much much better it will be able to cut through the waves rather than paddle steamers if you imagine a rough sea a paddle steamer will, will be rough oh, we can actually recreate that paddle. right now the camp there, no, we go. <laughs> there we go rough sea um, and it goes much slower Ooh. oh there we go it actually happening. oh actually I'm feeling a little bit bilious <laughs> another word look it up um, right. but, but with a screw propeller you can cut straight through the waves go much faster and with an iron hull that means she's much stronger, can carry a lot more and actually it cut down the time from Liverpool to New York in half so it only took two weeks. That's and incredible. You seeing that coming over the horizon when you're stood in New York thinking what on earth is that? It's the largest ship in the world. This building here, the White Building, that was Brunel's original mm -hmm. drawing office so that's where he would have worked with his engineers. What, that bay window? Yes. With his pencil in his hand? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so that's his original drawing office and that's actually part of the new project that we're working on now called Being Brunel and the whole of this is going to be redeveloped into a brand new museum um, which will be opening in a couple of years. Fantastic. Now I can see it's very popular. You've got people on the deck, yeah. you've got people in the rigging, which you can now do. You can go up in the rigging, yeah. get your GoPro on your head and off you go. Uh, memories that last a lifetime with yes, that GoPro. Yeah. Uh, other manufacturers of recording equipment are available, <laughs> but they've got people always, every time I go past, it's always busy, people dropping in. Yeah. Uh, and if you buy a ticket once, they can come back? Yeah, if you buy your ticket, you can come back as many times as you like in a year. Oh, so fantastic. It's great value. I've already been on once, so I've got my ticket, I'm coming back in. That's great. That's great, Jess. That is super. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. You talked to the Unnatural History Unit. We found out about iron. There is a way of making it float and go fast. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. No problem. Lovely. Let's go back on shore. All right, then. Yeah. Great stuff, Colin. Thank you so much. Now, if you want to get in touch with him on Twitter, you can. He's at Moody Colin. Now, that's not because he's moody. That's just his name. So send him in your local history stories at Moody Colin, hashtag the source. Yes, and don't forget to tweet us because we love to hear about your thoughts and your stories on the show. So next up, we head down to the theatre, or at least you did. Yep. I went to Warmly to the Brassworks Theatre to hear all about their latest production, which opens tonight, Deep Hit. So I'm here with the cast and crew of Deep Pit at Brassworks Theatre. So let's start with Brassworks. It's been around for just over two years now. So earlier you said it was just a big white room and now it's this. So how did you start and how have you got to where you are now? Uh, well, it was a lot of hard work, um, but I had a lot of help, uh, a lot of support from the Arts Council, South Gloss Council, some of the parishes and Kingswood Heritage Museum and Tools for Self-Reliance, which are two charities which work in this building as well. Um, but yes, we've constructed our own purpose-built theatre now and it's great because I get to work with very talented professionals like these people here and, uh, and this time round we're doing Deep Pit, which is a play about the Kingswood miners in the 19th century. So perfect regional theatre. Definitely. So like you've come a long way from just a white room. Do you have any, like, what are your kind of future plans for this place? To retire. To retire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let someone else deal with it. Um, no, we, we've, we've already got a Christmas play sorted out. We have um, a sort of family friendly play uh, coming up in December, um, which is uh, Sherlock Holmes. It's our second Sherlock Holmes adaptation, but we have a female Sherlock Holmes. So we like to do things a bit differently here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, obviously, right now we are on the set of Deep Pit itself, so do you want to all explain what Deep Pit actually is? I'll let our director, Anna, uh, <laughs> talk about uh, that. So Deep Pit refers to one of the pits that used to be in the region. There was 70 coal pits in this area of Kingswood, or it was called many different things back then. And um, this play is centred around a family, the Crew family, uh, all of whom have some connection to the pit. The uh, Jonathan Crew, who Adrian plays, is the father of the household, and then uh, Elizabeth Crew um, runs everything at home, washing. They had to do out, out work as well as just work working down the pits to keep the money coming in. And it's about their kind of struggles with surviving in this sort of quite savage time and 
the religious um, aspects, things that were going on around in the area to try and control the miners. Um, and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of sadness, but there's some there's some fun and some jokes and some jovial bits too. But it's obviously quite a dark. It was quite a dark time. Um, so yeah, it reflects on that. And also the strength that is in the community and in within families as well. So yeah, it has some hope in it. So clearly it's a very, there's a lot going on in this play and it's very different to life now. So how long does it take you to kind of prepare for like a play like this? Um, you want a good while with the script and doing your own research because Adrian obviously did a lot of research when he was writing it because there's a lot of detail within there but as a director you want to have a good overview of what was going on around the time um, and also thinking about the characters, what the script says about them and what they say about each other and you can read a lot into what's going on before you even then go into the rehearsal room but it's actually everything really happens in here because it's what these people bring to their characters and bring to the script as well and make it alive so you can do a lot of preparation but it actually really all happens on its feet when you're in here yeah wow, so. Anna just mentioned that you had to do a lot of research and you wrote the script yeah. where do you even start with something like that um, well, it came out of a workshop, a writing workshop I was doing with Soho um, Theatre in London and Bristol Old Vic. Um, and I wanted to write something, I wanted to kind of write a political piece, um, but not set in the modern day. So something which was set in a period which reflected a lot of issues that are currently happening. But not being too on the nose, so it's not important that you know all that. I think, you, you know, you can um, experience this piece um, and take away from it you know, everyone's going to take away different things. It, it's it's a, a quite an open piece. But, yeah, that's where I started. And then the more I looked into the Kingswood Coalfields at the time, I realised what hardship these people had to deal with. And, as Anna said, what a dark time it was. But then the the uplifting bit was the resilience of these people and how they they battled through it and they survived i mean there's there's a, a very big town here now so it just proved that people did make it through all that sort of darkness and hardship so it's like it's going to be a really good place so where can people get tickets when does it start when does it end okay well it starts on tuesday the 21st of october next tuesday um, and it runs for three weeks tuesday to saturday up until the 8th of november um, we have online booking at uh, brassworkstheatre.com and or they can actually pay on the door we have a box office working here as well because we have a licensed bar downstairs so people can buy a drink and bring it up into the space have a good evening at the theatre Amazing. So, anyone nervous? Anyone scared? Or everyone just really excited? <laughs> Watch what you're saying. Excited. <laughs> Say excited. We're all excited. Get on with it. Yeah. So, what's everyone roles? What? Well, I played Elizabeth Crew, the mum, and uh, and I I'm her son Jack. One son and one and daughter. I her Mary. Yeah. Mary. Let us Aka Meg, as everyone calls you. Yeah. <laughs> Meg's my pet name. Pet name. <laughs> I play two roles. Two. I play Arthur Bridges, who is a, a bailiff of the time, okay. and Pastor Jeffries, who is the Methodist preacher. And the two at the back. <laughs> I'm, I'm a drunken friend of, called Jacob Lacey. Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. <laughs> and I'm the mine owner's son. It's called Henry Knight. The villain of the piece. Mm. Oh, so you're the villain. <laughs> the villain. Priorities, his priorities don't lie with the welfare of his miners. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, thank you very much, guys, for the chat. It sounds like it's going to be a really exciting and dark play. But everyone should definitely come and check it out here at Brassworks Theatre. Looks like a fantastic production. Yeah, it's really good. It should be should be great. So that's it for part one already. Join us after the break where I'll be talking to local rapper and producer Kingsman. And I'll tell you all about our beach clean at Portishead last weekend. See you soon.